Hi, it's Rob from Skid Steer Genius, and I'm here to answer one of the age-old questions that we continually get. Uh, it's been over 20 years now, and I still get the same question two or three times a week, and people are very, very confused. I end up on the phone with them for a good hour trying to explain to them how to use these valves properly, and all of a sudden the light bulb will come on and they'll understand. So what I want to do is I'm going to run you through this today, and I'll give you a real-life scenario so you, so you understand better how this works. This valve has been around for 20, 30 years at least. It's made by Rexroth. Now there's a lot of copies of it out there now, especially with all the Chinese implements coming in. But generally the, the operation of this is exactly the same. You have a set of primary ports and they run straight through to the other side of the, of the valve. If you never hooked electricity up to this, you could run your hoses through here and you could still run your primary function, which in many cases, if it's a, um, Let's just say it's a sickle bar mower. You can run the motor of that sickle bar and cut all day long and never hook electricity up to it. What happens though on that sickle bar is that when you want to raise and lower the boom arm, you have to redirect this oil somehow. So what you do is you apply electricity, 12 volts, to this solenoid. This is a coil of wire. When you apply 12 volts to it, it creates a 12 uh, volt little uh, circuit inside here and creates a magnet, an electromagnet. That magnet pulls up a little uh, valve inside here and redirects the oil. So it takes the oil from these primary ports going through here and it runs it from the primary port out the secondary ports. And so now that enables you to redirect that oil and do something with it. Now where people get confused, especially on a mower or there's also a lot of um, cement mixers out there, what happens is they're running their cement mixer and they've got it in detent, um, the, the detent valve is set on. So they've clicked it and now the oil is just running through. They hit the button to redirect the oil and the solenoid slams one way and doesn't go the other way and they don't understand why. And to properly use this on, like I said, the cement mixer or even the sickle, you have to hit the detent and turn the oil off, then use your momentary oil flow and that could be on a, on a Bobcat, it's a toggle, on a Kubota, it's a button, in, the, uh, um, in this ASB behind me, it's a toggle. And what you want to do is, while you're toggling it, you hold the button down. So you're redirecting the oil by putting electricity into this solenoid. The oil is getting redirected out the front here, and it's going to a cylinder to do some kind of work. And then you're using the toggle to make it do the work in the forward or rear direction. So in the case of a sickle bar, what it's doing is it's redirecting that oil to a cylinder that makes the bar go up, makes the bar go down. In the case of a cement mixer, it's opening the chute to the left, uh, closing it to the right. In the case of like a mini backhoe, um, you're redirecting it from say the bucket function to the thumb function. So there's, there's, it works generally on, two, on a two function type of system and that function stops, the other function has to stop. So I'll give you an example, a, uh, a Harley rake or a broom, a uh, rotary broom. The broom is running and you're angling it left and right. That is a completely different valve. That's an open center valve where the oil is running through and it's running the motor. And when you touch a button, it has two solenoids and those solenoids take a little bit of oil and redirect it to the cylinder, either in a forward or rear direction. So it's not relying on the pump of the machine. The pump of the machine though, is capable of doing that same function. So that's why it's really important to understand the difference. So you can have it running forward with this open center type of valve, which you see on a Harley rig, or you see it on a, on a broom. It's spinning, you turn left, you turn right. It's redirecting the oil within that valve. On this, it's only one circuit. So you have to use the oil from the machine, either going forward or reverse, as well as applying electricity to this, and now you're doing that secondary function and you're making it go left and right. So it's, it's a very inexpensive way of doing it, but it, I understand that it does get confusing because I've answered this question thousands and thousands of times. So that's why we're shooting this video so, so I give you a better understanding of what to do. Now let's walk up to my sickle bar mower. It only gets used a couple times a year. Let's have a look at what's on here. So there's that valve that I was talking about. And if you look, here's my input hoses. This is the oil coming in. And again, without any electricity applied, the oil goes out and it follows over to this motor. 
And so when you hit your detent, this motor's spinning, the oil's going through here, and nothing is happening as far as this valve goes. Just oil is coming in, going out, going to the motor, coming back, coming back through the return line, and then going back to your machine. Now, when I apply electricity right here through this cord, and it's usually through a button, a switch, something inside your machine, it causes this to shuttle, and when it shuttles, the oil now comes through here. And if you follow these hoses down, it goes down to the cylinder. Now the cylinder, what it does is it raises and lowers the boom. So right now it's upright, but when I want it to, I can lower it down or I can raise it back up again. Now, I have to push my electrical button inside my cab to make this trigger, and then I have to use the opposite thumb switch to make it activate something. So to make my pump go either forward or reverse. So those two motions have to be done at exactly the same time. So I'm just gonna take you inside uh, or show you on a, on a set of sticks exactly how that works. So I knew one day when I bought these sticks that they would come in handy. So now I'm gonna show you firsthand how it works. So here's my right stick, here's my left stick, okay? Normally, if I was going to run my sickle bar to run the motor, I would hit the detent valve, okay? That locks my hydraulic flow on, keeps it operational, and keeps the, uh, the mower running, and I don't have to hold my finger on it. There's another way of doing it. If I let go of my detent, I can do it this way by just pushing this button, but I would have to hold my thumb the entire time. So that's why they have these detent buttons on here. So I push the detent button, my mower's running, okay? Now, when I wanna raise and lower the boom, what I wanna do is shut the oil off, so I touch this button again, now I have my secondary stick here, and I'm going to use this paddle. On a Bobcat, these paddles uh, enable you to make the oil go forward, make the oil go in reverse. So now what I'll do is, this is my auxiliary switch right here that would actually run the, the sickle. So I would push this button. When I push this button, it redirects or it puts electricity to that coil. And now while I'm holding this button, I use my pump control switch. And this makes my pump go forward, and this makes it go in reverse. So now my boom is gonna go up, or sorry, up and down, up and down. As soon as I let go, if I was to push this again, my motor would start running. So all I would do is when I wanna raise and lower my boom, hold this button, push this either left or right. Once I get my height okay, then let go, go back to here again, push the detent, and off I go. Now, say you have uh, an Etera uh, cement mixer, okay? How the cement mixer would work is same thing. I wanna mix, I push this button, okay? Now my mixer is spinning and it's mixing concrete, okay? Now, I wanna open and close the hydraulic chute in the center. I turn it off, I go here and I push this button. Now I'm redirecting the, or I, I'm, I'm triggering that solenoid to redirect the oil and now I do this to open the chute and this to close the chute. When I'm done, I close the chute, turn it off again, and now nothing's happening until I push the detent again. So now I push the detent and now my cement mixture will start back up again. So I hope this simplified it for you folks uh, and just gave you a better understanding of how this, how this works. Because you're gonna find that valve in everything. All the major manufacturers use that Rexroth valve because it's so reliable it's very inexpensive for what it's, it's capable of doing. Uh, they're rated up to 25 gallons. So they run most modern attachments very well and they don't get jammed up with dirt very easily. Um, they're easy to service. You can take them apart. So you're gonna see that valve everywhere. However, you are also gonna see copies because it is such a popular valve worldwide. You're gonna see copies that pop up and those I can't guarantee you, they work all the time because we do have problems now, even though I explain this to people, how to make this work, there's a, a brand like Wolverine cement mixers and they've got several different brands and they're, they're Richie Brothers auctions all the time. And I'm constantly having to deal with those where normally these Rexroth valves, I just show you how to do this once and you're off and running. On those valves, I show you how to do this and the valve still doesn't work. And sometimes it's just, it has a 24, 24 volt coil or some crazy ass thing on it. And we just never know. We spend hours trying to troubleshoot stuff that people picked up at auction. So um, that's another reason you can't get a hold of me. <laughs> So anyways, uh, I hope that you learned something from this. If you have any questions, fill out a form on the website and just and we'll get back to you. I, I guarantee you I'm up late at night filling those forms out make sure that I get the answers to you guys. 
And if you have any other questions, again, just fill out the form. Uh, let us know if you, uh, if you have any feedback. There's a, a feedback form also on the website. And uh, we appreciate you watching this video.